Hi everyone, so I know that today I am not at uh, school. I am actually setting up for the Whiskey Student Art Expo, and this is the art show I was talking about that's going to be held at the Shaney Mansion in Oak Park. So I thought I would give you all a preview. Here's the website. Um, it's the whiskeyartist.weebly.com. So it's that W-S-C-A-E that you see right here and it would be we, artist.weebly.com and just to give you a little heads up or showing because that's where I'm at uh, setting up everything for tomorrow is here is a little sampling of what took place last year so you can see that there is a sculptor who will be sculpting there is a clay table there will be several other artists that are actual artists um, that sell their work um, working around uh, different areas where there's models. Um, I know this year we're having the uh, ballet um, in Oak Park will be being the model so you as a student can come with your sketchbook and draw and talk to other artists and how they do different things even um, clay artists will be at the clay table helping you with different ideas. So you can see that this is kind of um, it's a lot of fun. Uh, it takes place tomorrow April 23rd from 10 a.m. to 4.30 and again it's in Oak Park so just to kind of show you what this cool art um, expo is so here I'll go to uh, the list on this website here are a ton of different participating artists and art organizations so you can see some of that in the Oak Park Art League here are the um, what you're gonna see them outside are some of the different ballerinas um, something else I wanted to point out is the Oak Park Art League over the summer is having um, courses so you can learn how to do different drawings and different things too. So I have a lot of those other things as well to show or share with you before um, the end of school anyways too. So these are some of the artists that will be there as well. They have websites and different things. Um, you can click here and go to the past artists and you'll see this is on the mansion's grounds is a greenhouse and this is more of what the work looks like when it's displayed and that is where I will be. Okay, this week is Hispanic Heritage Week so we are going to study Pablo Picasso. Uh, just a quick little history about him and then we'll get into our um, writing and drawings today. So one of the quotes that I like about him is he said, learn the rules like a pro so you can break them like an artist. He was a very good rule breaker in the art world. You used to only have to be able to draw realistic paintings and he's the one that created all these other amazing movements. So some history about him. He was born in 1881 and he passed away in 1973. His first word was pencil. He was a terrible student because he was what they call a child prodigy and he loved art and breaking the rules of art. He created his own category in art called Cubism. He was not just a painter, he made sculptures, ceramics, and did printmaking. So looking at his artwork, here is um, a few of his most famous pieces. There are lots. He's very famous, so some of his artwork, artwork has reached up to a hundred million dollars for one drawing. Uh, once he had thrown out a drawing that he had sketched on a TV show, or an interview, sorry, into the garbage, and he, uh, the person had said, oh, I really would like that, and he said, oh, well, if you want it, I'm sure it's worth a lot of money. So as, as of last year, he had about 1,147 pieces of his artwork were stolen. Our goals for today. First thing I would like you to do is glue your Zentangle design onto your background. If you did not get to paint a background, all I want you to do is just take a picture of your Zentangle as is and upload it to Art Sonia. We'll take care of that later. And I would like everybody to make sure that they cut out their Zentangles. So I don't, looking at this seahorse over here, as you can see the seahorse, uh, it was cut out and then glued onto that monochromatic background. So I would like you to do that. If you have any other pieces, you could do that. Some of them that I approved and said that you could have, um, the full piece filled out, that's fine. So remember, upload it to Art Sonia. Name, it's the Zentangle Monochromatic when you're looking for it, and then we're going to watch the face dog.
So here's an image of what we're going to be working on today. Why don't you at this moment take um, a peek at the paper copies on your desk. Remember you're going to leave those so that we can use them for the rest of the um, other fourth grade classes for today. Okay, so today we are going to be drawing The Face Dove by Pablo Picasso. And what I want you guys to use today is your black Crayola marker that you have at your table. So why don't you grab one of those now. And then I would like your papers to be in the vertical position. So it's going to be a nice, the long vertical position up and down. Alright, first thing as always, I want you to write your name and then your teacher code on the back and then flip your paper over. Okay, so the first thing that we need to do when we're looking at Pablo Picasso's face dove is we need to draw her face. So we're going to do the first line um, making her face. Okay, it's almost like a U shape and I know you guys can do that. So here's the end of my paper and then here's the other end of my paper, the top of my paper, etc. I can't zoom out anymore, but I know you guys will be able to figure this out. So to show you, Here's the top. I want to kind of go a little bit lower, and I need to have the dove on this side, so I'm going to about the middle is where I'm looking. I'm going to start by doing a curve. So kind of do a curve like this, going down. All right, and I kind of go in, and then I bring it up. Don't worry if it's not perfect. My paper is a little bumpy right now. Sorry because I'm having I'm doing this on one of those leg stands. So you obviously won't have my wiggly line here, but that's fine. The next thing that we need to do is, you know, to make us feel a little bit better, we're going to add those cool feather marks. So move this here and I'm going to zoom in. Okay. So we're going to do these cool feather marks of kind of getting like this and it comes off like that. Okay. Similar to our um trees that I think you guys learned. You can do like a zigzag in and then curve it over like this. You can bring this up. We'll extend it a little bit more. And then you will add a little bit more. Here's another line. You can kind of do like a V coming off of this. Curve this one up a little bit more. And then maybe have like a little wiggly line here. It's up to you. However you want it to look like for a feather. And so there's the start of our face that we've got on here. <clears throat> We're going to give her her first her nose. So kind of like an eyebrow slash nose. You kind of come like this and you come down. And then you kind of tuck it in a little bit like that. And then you just go another little thing here. You can curve it if you need to. The great thing about Picasso is it doesn't need to be perfect. He usually sketched these immediately, very quick. Um, so I don't want you to worry about it being perfect. Then we're going to do the other eyebrow. So for the other eyebrow, you know, you can kind of just mark it like this. So that way they're not angry looking. Very good. So looking back at this, um, we're going to look at the next thing and I want you to keep referencing the sheet that's at your table so you can see what I'm doing or what I'm going to go do next. We need to do the part of her eye that kind of goes from the face line here, kind of makes like a little bit of a mountain or hillside. Sometimes it can make her look angry, however it comes out for you. Um, I don't want you to stress. We're just practicing drawing like Picasso. So we can do a quick little line, that's the start of her eyebrow for the other one. And then here, you're going to do kind of a little bit of a rainbow. So it could be close together. We genuinely want them to be close together. And then you're going to do a circle, like such. And then a small circle on the inside. I know, creepy looking, right? Then we got to do our other eye. We obviously don't want to have it too off where we have the eye all the way up here. You don't want the other eye all the way down here, even though Picasso did do those um, <clears throat> for some of his faces for cubism. We genuinely, you know, he's got it a little bit angled so it makes her face look a little tilted, or you can do it right across. Up to you. 
So for this one, I'm going to just put it up a little bit higher. So we're going to begin with her other eye. And what we want to do is, uh, we've got the eyebrows, so we're going to kind of make that other sort of a mountain shape. So I will kind of go like this, go up and curve in. And it's okay if it's extra wonky and weird looking, that's fine. I kind of expect that. So then we're going to do that other line. Go a little bit straighter is what he's got it. So she's kind of looking like she's got a raised eyebrow or something. And then we're going to do the little bit of a circle underneath. And we kind of do the other part of her eye. He doesn't have it closed. You can close the circle. You can leave the circle open. It's entirely up to you. Then for the mouth, we're going to do the first thing is kind of this little bit of a straight line. We're going to work on that mouth. And that mouth is almost, it's not quite a straight line, but it's a little bit of a straight line. So you're going to just draw a quick line. Kind of looks like their mouth is closed. And the following thing what we'll do is the top part of her lips. So we're going to do a little bit, almost looks like a mountain peak. It's entirely up to you. You can curve it, bring it down, kind of curve it, do it that way. They do not need to be perfect. You can make them more, you can make it less. His bottom one, you just kind of do the same thing. He didn't have it finished touching. You can have it finished touching. That's entirely up to you. Okay, so now we've got her face. You can like it, not like it. Again, I don't want anybody stressing. You're doing a great job. So we're going to move on to the dove. And I just want you to know that you are doing a wonderful job. This is not easy. Take a little bit of a breather. <sighs> okay. So the bird, what we're going to do is we're going to curve this in a little bit and kind of just bring off a triangle. After your triangle, you're going to do a little bit of a rainbow like that. You can extend the rainbow a little bit lower. So it's like a skinny little head and neck. Angle the next line out a little bit. I would bring it down towards where you have the eyebrow. And then it just kind of comes out and does this little bit of a whoop down. So I'm going to slide my paper over. All right. What we're going to do next is that little mark of the wing on the inside here. So we're going to do that. Kind of help us. For the bird, we'll finish up the eye. It's just a circle and then a little bit of a circle on the inside. And for the beak, just do the line that way for the beak. Okay, so now back to the wing. It looks like there's three big lumps. So like one, two, and three. And that's what we're going to do right now. Starting kind of eyeballing it near the middle of this. I'm going to bring it down about here. And I'm going to do one, two, three. Don't worry if it's too close to the face. I know I made mine a little closer. And don't worry if it's further out. Either way, it's going to look nice. So off of this part for the bottom of the feather, or the wing of the bird, he had it kind of come out like this, and then up towards the face to make it a pointy part of the wing. Good. Now, on the inside of this part of the wing, I'll zoom it this way. We're going to do that small, thin line, like that, okay? And then we need to connect this part to this part of the wing. So I'm going to connect it, like that. And then it makes a little bit of a loop backwards. So I'm going to slide my paper up if I can. Taking that sharp corner off, I come around, I kind of come up, 
and make a little hook. Very good. The last final part is we're going to do that one line right here. So draw that line right there like that. And voila, you have your beautiful Dove Face by Picasso. The last thing, um, if you would like, it's up to you entirely. Picasso signed his name right here, so you can sign your name right here if you would like using your black marker. Another way you could do it, and I know I've done this before, is here's my other one. And no, each time I draw this, it's a little different. You can see some pencil lines from one time I drew it. I think it's just easier when you just use the marker. So I signed Mrs. Holland. Entirely up to you. Great job, everybody.